Dr. Pasha performs many procedures that focus on severe sleep apnea. For the majority of patients with sleep apnea and snoring, the back of the throat is what causes the most obstruction and is also the source of vibration when you snore. This most commonly occurs with the soft palate and uvula. The soft palate begins at the junction of the roof of the mouth after the hard bony portion of the roof becomes soft. You can feel this junction with your tongue or finger. The soft palate ends as an arch with the bell at the back of your throat called the uvula. This area is also called the snoring center and for most patients is where the sound of snoring originates. To open this region, Dr. Pasha may reduce the size of the soft palate by removing the bottom portion of your soft palate in the operating room. This procedure is called by a very long name, the uvulopharyngopalatoplasty, or more commonly, UP3. Uvulo for the uvula, pharyngo for the back of the throat, palato for the soft palate, and plasty means that the area is removed, then reconstructed with stitches to make the area smooth and heal well. A UP3 is performed in the operating room while you are asleep through your mouth without making any incisions on the face. If your tonsils are enlarged or if the regions where your tonsils live in the side of the back of the throat is contributing to blocking your airway, Dr. Pasha will begin by removing your tonsils. The bottom of the soft palate is then removed and stitches are placed to close up the area. The soft palate prevents food and drink from entering your nose so the entire soft palate cannot be removed. To reduce snoring, Dr. Pasha may also recommend pillar implants to stiffen up the remaining soft palate. During the pillar procedure, three tiny polyester implants are placed into the remaining soft palate with time averaging from four to six weeks. The implants may stimulate your body to form scar tissue, adding additional structural support, stiffening the remaining palate. This stiffening of the remaining portion of the soft palate further reduces the tissue vibration that can cause snoring and palatal tissue collapse. If Dr. Pasha feels you have a collapse in the deeper portion of the back of your throat, or if he suspects that the back of your tongue may be falling back when you sleep, blocking your airway, an additional procedure called hyoamyotomy and genioglossal advancement procedure may be performed fairly simply at the same time. After completing the throat portion, Dr. Pasha will make a small incision under your neck, typically in the area that is not visible. The hyoid bone, which is located above your Adam's apple, is the only bone that does not connect to any other bone. This bone instead supports muscles that are connected to the back of the throat and tongue. Sutures are placed around the hyoid and brought forward toward your chin, just enough to give support to the muscles that support the back of the throat and tongue. The suture is then tied to the inside of the jawbone with a small screw that you should never feel. Another suture is placed around the back of the tongue to prevent the base of the tongue from slipping back at night, like a hammock. You shouldn't feel a suture at all. Dr. Pasha utilizes many techniques that are designed for sleep apnea patients to open their upper airway. Dr. Pasha says no two patients are the same. There are many different goals for sleep apnea surgery. For some, Dr. Pasha's goal may be to cure or significantly reduce your sleep apnea so that you will no longer require a CPAP machine. For others, we may be improving your sleep apnea so that you may better tolerate your CPAP at lower pressures and make it less dangerous for you if you mistakenly take a nap without your machine. For others, this may be the beginning of a major lifestyle change and you may be improving your airway so you can begin an exercise and diet program to lose weight with the eventual goals of curing your sleep apnea in the near future. The UP3 and its variations have minimal complications. Bleeding can occur within two to three weeks of the surgery. Sometimes you may have to return to the operating room to cauterize the bleeding point. The pillar implants occasionally come out or extrude. Extrusion of the implant occurs slowly and often is only partially extruded. If this occurs, Dr. Pasha may replace the implant or leave it in depending on how long the implant has been in place. Rarely, the incision on your neck may become infected with fluid. Other complications are exceedingly rare and will be explained to you in detail with your consultation. The recovery from palato surgery is not easy. You'll have a severe sore throat for seven to 10 days and the discomfort may last to two to three weeks. You will be given pain medication to control the discomfort. You will be on a soft diet for two weeks and you should anticipate a five to 15 pounds weight loss from being on a soft and liquid diet. Immediately afterwards, it will feel strange to swallow as your anatomy has completely changed. The first swallows will feel awkward and liquids may be misdirected through your nose. You will more than likely stay overnight and should anticipate missing one week of work. We hope this presentation on UP3 and its variations has been informative. If you have any more questions or concerns, please discuss them with Dr. Pasha and his staff. We look forward to helping you breathe freely both day and night. 
For more information or to schedule an appointment, please visit PashaMD.com or call us at 713-523-8800.